So in this video, I intend to run you through an example of the Bayes rule. But before that, let's just recap the terminology associated with Bayes rule. So first of all, we have a sample space. Then we have what is known as a partition. A partition is a set of events that is collectively exhaustive which means that they occupy 100% of the sample space and they are mutually exclusive, which means that if one of them occurs, we can be sure that the other two do not occur. So that is what is a partition. Then what we have are known as the prior probabilities. The prior probabilities. They are given as probability of A1, probability of A2, and probability of A3. Also, we have an event within here, which is given by this oval. Let's call this event B. And in addition to the prior probabilities, we are also given the conditional probabilities of B, conditioned upon A1, conditioned upon A2 and conditioned upon A3. Given these probabilities, what we are interested in is the posterior probabilities. Posterior, posterior probabilities. And the Bayes rule provides a formula to calculate these posterior probabilities which is for example if we want the posterior probability of the event A1 given that we know B has occurred is given by the probability of A1 times the probability of B given A1 divided by the probability of A1 times the probability of B given A1 plus probability of A2 times the probability of B given A2 plus the probability of A3 into probability of B given A3. So that's a lot of letters here. I hope this will become more clear when I relate each of these quantities to their respective quantities in the example. So if at this point it's not clear what's going on, just wait for the uh, explanations in the example. Our example question is as follows. A factory produces three type of coins. 80% of the time it produces type 1 coins. These coins have a 50% probability of showing heads and 50% probability of showing tails if tossed. It produces 10% of type 2 coins and these coins have a probability of 60% of showing up heads and 40% probability of showing tails if tossed. The factory also produces another 10% type 3 coins which have a 40% probability of showing heads and a 60% probability of showing tails if tossed. So you can see together these type 1, type 2 and type 3 coins make up 100% of the total production capacity of this factory. Further we know that if we randomly pick up a coin from all the coins produced by this factory and toss it 10 times then we get 7 heads. Now given this information that we get 7 heads out of 10 times, what is the probability that this coin belongs to a type 1 category or type 2 category or type 3 category? First let's understand what is the information provided to us. These are the quantities that are given to us and we have discussed this a few minutes back. So. Even before the coin is tossed, given that you have this distribution over here, 
you would think that any coin that is randomly picked from the coins produced from the factory, there would be an 80% chance that it is a type 1 coin. There you have 80%. There would be a 10% chance that it is a type 2 coin and there would be a 10% chance that it is a type 3 coin. These quantities here too can be computed using the data that is provided to us in the question. For example, this one. So this one is what is the probability of getting seven heads given that the coin is of type one. We can use the binomial formula for that, which is we know there are seven, 10 tosses out of which seven are heads the probability of a heads is 0 0.5 raised to the power 7 and the probability of getting a tails is 0 0.5 raised to the power 3. Similarly for this one which is the probability of getting 7 heads given it's a type 2 coin can be calculated by 10c7 probability of getting a heads is 0 0.6 we get it seven times into the probability of getting tails which is 0 0.4 and we get a tails three times similarly we can compute this quantity over here as well using the data we have and now since we have a lot of calculation here and here we will move to excel all right so first let's understand the elements of this excel as we had seen in the notes the events a1 a2 and a3 together form a partition of the sample space which means that they are collectively exhaustive so if you pull out a coin it has to be either a type 1 coin or a type 2 coin or a type 3 coin it cannot be any other type of coin also, if a coin is of type 1, it cannot be of type 2 or type 3. Or a coin is of type 2, then it cannot be a coin of type 1 or type 3. Also, from the questions, we have the probability of getting heads or tails for each type of coin which we have populated here. Then we see that this is our event B. Event B is that you toss the coin 10 times and then you get a head a certain number of times and a tails a certain number of times. Also you have your initial beliefs about which group this coin belongs to before you even toss it. And because the coin is manufactured in these proportions for each type, our belief about the coin being of any one of these types is also in the same proportion. Remember, this is when you have not even tossed the coin. What is the belief that the coin is of any one of these types? Okay. Next we see the probability of getting 7 heads out of 10 tosses for the coin being of each of type 1, type 2 and type 3. And these values are calculated using the binomial formula as we have discussed earlier. So we see the probability of getting 7 heads if the coin is of type 1 as 12% and the 12% is obtained using this binomial formula which is 10 choose 7 into probability of heads in raised to the power 7 into probability of getting tails raised to the power 3 and similarly we have the other two values and just to get an intuitive sense of these values it kind of makes sense because what we have observed is that there are 7 heads out of 10 and if the coin is of, is of type 1 then the chances of getting heads is 50% which means ideally we would expect 5 heads out of 10 tosses and for type 3 we would expect 4 heads out of 10 tosses and for type 2 we would have expected 6 heads out of 10 tosses 
So six seems to be the closest to seven. So it makes intuitive sense to see the highest probability for seven heads given type two instead of seven has given type one or seven has given type three. Okay, so now the next step is to calculate the posterior probability. This is the formula that that is the base rule that is used to calculate the posterior probability. Uh, it's only pasted for uh, type one posterior probability, but it is very similar for type two and type three. All one needs to do is replace one with two here and one with two here and you get these values. Bayes rule, it is often said that the Bayes rule allows you to update your beliefs. So that is what we see here. Our initial beliefs were that the coin is of type 1 with the probability of 80%, type 2 10% and type 3 10%. And the new probabilities after our experiment of 10 tosses is that the coin <coughs> is of type 1, that probability has come down to 78.5%. For type 2, it has gone up from 10% to 18% and for type 3, it has gone down from 10% to 3%. And again, it makes sense because 6 is the closest to 7. 6 heads was predicted by type 2 and we got 7 heads. And that is why the probability for that type has gone up from 10% to 18%. The probability for the coin being of type 3 has declined the most. It has gone down from 10% to almost 3.5%. Because that is because the a type 3 probability would have predicted 4 heads out of 10 tosses, which is the furthest from what we have observed, which is 7. So we see based on this run of 10 coin tosses and seeing 7 heads, we see that our belief that the coin is of type 2 has increased and the belief that the coin is of type 1 and type 3 has decreased. And it is often said that the base rule allows you to update your beliefs. So what I'm going to do here is I have created this table wherein I'm going to perform multiple experiments of 10 coin tosses. So this is the first one which we have already done where we tossed the coin 10 times and we got seven heads. So I'm just going to record my posterior probabilities that I got after getting seven heads. Let me just paste it here. I'll go to paste special values and transpose. Okay. And now these are going to be my new set of prior probabilities. So I'm just going to paste them here as well. Values. Okay. And I'm going to say that this time when I toss my coin, I got five heads. So these are my new set of posterior probabilities after my second experiment where I got five heads. Let me just copy them again to my table where I'm going to record the prior probabilities after each experiment of 10 coin tosses. And then are, these are also my new prior probabilities okay and this time I toss the coin and I get six heads okay so this is six heads and I note my new posterior probabilities again I record them in this table values and transpose okay and I also make them my new prior probabilities before I toss the coin again this time I get three heads so I put three heads here record my posterior probabilities values and transpose make them my new set of prior probabilities before tossing the coin again And in my new experiment, I have five heads now. So let me change it to five heads. Okay, and this is, after five experiments, this is my final set of 
posterior probabilities. Okay, so this, what you see here is a updated set of beliefs after each experiment of 10 coin tosses. So what we saw is that our initial set of beliefs was that the coin is of type 1 is 80%, type 2 10% and type 3 10%. And as we performed our trials of 10 coin tosses in the first set we got 7 heads, then 5 heads, then 6 heads, then 3 heads, then 5 heads again. We started updating our beliefs. And let me just chart it out. I'm going to put a chart here. Okay. So this this is the probability that the coin is of type one has gone from eighty percent down to seventy eight percent, then back up again up to eighty one, eighty. 89 and then 90 and similarly this is for type 2 and type 3 so as this this indicates that as and when we get new evidence after each run of 10 coin tosses we update our beliefs that the coin is of type 1 type 2 or type 3 and this is how Bayes rule helps us to update our probabilities I hope this example was of some help to you